everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. I hope you're doing really amazing. It is Sunday, the start of a brand new week, but we're heading closer and closer to the official start of hurricane season, which is now 55 days out, although we could see development before June 1st. I definitely think that will happen. However, this video will be focused on the weather update for the Caribbean, of course, but also I want to talk about tropical waves why they're important to the Caribbean, as well as the downsides of them, and when we're likely to see the first one rolling off the African coast. So let's get straight into it. We're looking at the infrared satellite imagery here off the North Atlantic, a couple frontal systems loitering out there, and uh, we can see that cluster of all that convection offshore Africa. Now that is in association wa uh, with what is known as the intertropical convergence zone that is where trade winds of the north and south meet and sometimes we see this uh increase in activity there and uh, that is something that will definitely be a lot more common as they're going to be heading into the next couple of months especially for northern south america parts of central america trinidad tobago and uh, tropical waves they generally propagate along the intertropical convergence zone so there are some clusters of convection out there as we head closer to the caribbean though we can see that in the southwest it remains pretty active with all that shower and thunderstorm activity for parts of southeast nicaragua sections of costa rica and panama as well elsewhere not seeing any convection in the caribbean most islands are pretty much on the sunny side this morning maybe with some cloud cover across some areas and as we're going to be heading through today this is a look at the rainfall forecast from euro so a couple showers possible across parts of eastern cuba jamaica potentially the southern bahamas uh parts of hispaniola especially in the north and some spots in puerto rico as well virgin islands that's our antilles a few showers may move by nothing crazy expected for most islands though same story abc islands there may be a few showers passing by parts of the guyanas and venezuela colombia will likely be active with the north being very much dry and over in panama costa rica nicaragua as we saw there is some activity loitering around so that area remains a bit active but in parts of Honduras as well as Belize, even heading to some spots in El Salvador and Guatemala may experience a few showers today. Again, nothing crazy. We're not seeing those very colorful shadings within the area. Now, San Andreas and Providencia are nearby all that activity happening uh, for parts of Southern Central America and the Caribbean, so there could be a few showers today. But for areas such as the Cayman Islands and even the Turks and Caicos Islands and most of the Bahamas, not expected to experience much at all. Now, it remains windy in the southeast and south-central Caribbean uh, with those winds going over around 25 knots or so, potentially with higher gusts, also windy in the Gulf. But as we're going to be heading into later today, the winds may kick up a little bit for parts of the northern islands such as Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, even some spots in the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos Islands and within the vicinity of the Bay Islands of Honduras and just offshore Belize. But uh, generally for the northeastern Caribbean, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, uh, Leeward Islands as well, it should be pretty much calm as we head through today. Now we're shifting towards the hurricane season, tropical waves. Now what are they? So tropical waves, they're these disturbances. Well, how exactly do they form? Let's talk about it. So there is an area of high pressure sitting over in northern Africa where winds flow outward in a clockwise fashion and coming in from the south is much cooler conditions so with that warmer air flowing towards cooler air that creates a temperature contrast a difference in temperature and that allows for a wind pattern known as the african easterly jet so it is something that typically forms within the hurricane season and within it sometimes there are these disturbances which are the tropical waves and tropical waves are essentially elongated areas of low pressure and they're named waves because of a wavy pattern that you would see on a pressure map uh, when they are present and within low pressure areas there's usually more wet cooler weather uh, we typically see a lot of activity sometimes with these tropical waves some of which eventually develop into tropical cyclones now they're most common uh, as we head into the late spring and throughout summer because of atmospheric changes all caused by changing of the season. There's warmer 
temperatures, which helps to influence the rainy season in Africa. And uh, there is also the intertropical convergence zone migrating further to the north. And as I mentioned earlier, tropical waves propagate along the intertropical convergence zone. And tropical waves are important to the Caribbean, so let's not hate on them, okay? So they bring rainfall to the region, which we all need. And that is why the areas that are not within that zone where tropical waves usually pass are so dry. For example, the ABC Islands, Aruba, Bonaire, Curacao in the southeastern Caribbean. Very dry, uh, the driest islands in the region and also areas such as Anguilla. There isn't as much rainfall because, uh, well, for the ABC Islands, tropical waves typically pass to the north. For Anguilla, many times they pass to the south. So compared to islands such as Barbados, Dominica, St. Lucia, there isn't as much rainfall for those areas. So uh, there is typically more droughts or dry spells within those areas. The lack of rainfall can affect many things. I mean, we need water for consumption. We need it for various uh, domestic uses. We need it for irrigation. It is definitely needed for recreation. So if I'm going somewhere and I want to see this beautiful waterfall and I go there, I notice it's not as impressive. Why? Water levels are low. So we find that the velocity of that uh, river is low as well. So uh, we definitely need it for many, many things without a doubt, which many of us know already. So tropical waves are important. However, they become a disadvantage when they develop into major systems, tropical storms, hurricanes, because with that comes extreme weather conditions, extreme rainfall, very strong winds, storm surge, and on average, around 20% or so of tropical waves develop, and there are 60, around 60 on average that emerge from Africa uh, throughout the year, and sometimes they may be lower or more than that number, but seeing that this hurricane season is likely to be very active, we could actually see more tropical waves developing, a higher percentage of tropical waves actually developing into tropical cyclones, I would say maybe up to 30% or so. And the first tropical wave usually comes off during May. So sometimes maybe very late April going into May, that's usually when we typically expect to see the first tropical wave. I mean, uh, for last year, the first one came off, I believe it was in mid-May thereabout. And uh, in 2022, it was early May. So that's usually when the first tropical wave of the season emerge it emerges. It doesn't mean the first one will develop, but it could if conditions are conducive. But the most favorable conditions during the hurricane season are usually from around late August through mid-October. So that's when the most activity typically happens during the hurricane season. And so, guys, uh, that is pretty much what I wanted to share with you in terms of tropical waves. And looking at the anomaly map, we are transitioning to La Nina. And with La Nina, there is typically reduced wind shear in the Atlantic Basin. And that uh, actually favors more development because wind shear, those stronger upper-level winds, really help to inhibit development or intensification of tropical systems. And another thing that happens during La Nina is a more dominant area of high pressure, which could allow more systems to steer further west, so more land areas could be at risk this year. However, it doesn't mean that you will get a hurricane this year. I want to always say that in my videos because I know that some things may be a bit misleading. So yes, the hurricane season may be active. Yes, someone is most definitely going to get impacted this year. Who? No one knows at this point. However, the areas usually affected include the Caribbean, the Bahamas, East Coast, Gulf Coast of the U.S., as well as Central America. So persons within those areas should uh, take the necessary precautions for the hurricane season because it is better to be safe than to be sorry. You never know what can surprise us. There are a lot of surprises these days. However, my channel is here to keep you guys posted as per usual. And that is pretty much what I wanted to share with you in this update video. Also, tomorrow is the solar eclipse, which parts of the Caribbean will see. So that update video in the morning will cover uh, the basics that you should know and uh, how much of the sun you may see blocked out with the proper uh, viewing equipment. Because in the Caribbean, it is unlikely that you'll even notice that there's an eclipse happening uh, if you don't know about it. So with the proper viewing equipment, you can actually see the moon uh, blocking portions of the sun. However, I'll talk more about that tomorrow. And that's it for now. I hope you found this video to be very informative. And if you have any questions, 
Feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll respond when I get the chance to do so. And remember to always be weatherwise.